This is Measuring the Economy's Performance, discussion number five, Aggregates and Indicators. Remember that macroeconomics is a consideration of an entire national economy and not basically the individual decisions that are going to be made by individual companies or individual consumers. So when we want to take a look at the demand of an economy, we're going to call that the aggregate. Now, aggregate means total. So what is the total demand of an economy? And if we take a look at a general aggregate demand graph, we see it looks a lot like the curve that we saw when we saw individual demand a few chapters ago. And, we, and we, if we take a look at this, how does this make sense to us? Well, are we going to plan on spending a whole bunch of money on some stuff? Or are we going to plan on spending a whole bunch of money on a bunch of stuff? So if the price level is high, there's not going to be a lot of demand going on as far as the number of goods and services. If the price level is low, then there's going to be lots of demand for the items that are going on that are being produced in an economy, both goods and services. So you see the aggregate demand has a negative slope because it's an inverse relationship. Whereas we look at slide number 19, we see the aggregate supply looks a lot like the supply curve. Whereas if the price level is high with the promise of a whole bunch of profits that go with it, there's going to be a lot more productivity and a lot more goods and services being produced, a lot more jobs being hired and things of that nature. And so you'll often hear the terms of aggregate demand or aggregate supply. And that's kind of what they're talking about as far as on a national level. Now, as we're talking about these aggregate demand and aggregate supplies, a lot of this is kind of taking a guess of what's going to happen um, based on what we call economic indicators. And these are statistics used primarily by economists to explain what's going on in the economy or what will happen in the economy. Now, what a lot of people take, like to take a look at is the leading indicators. These are statistics that are government gathered or individually gathered or uh, somehow some group of people create these statistics that will say that if, what based on the statistic, I predict this is what's going to happen in the future. For example, a leading indicator for new orders for consumer goods. If a lot more people are ordering refrigerators, that must mean that they're feeling good about the economy and that they're not worried about going bankrupt, so that they go ahead and do it. Number of building permits is a very uh, popular uh, leading indicator because not only are all the jobs going in into the actual construction of a house or a building, but then all the stuff that goes in it would be a, definitely an indicator of economic good times or people looking better. Stock prices has a lot to do with the psychological ideas of how you approach the economy. Uh, interest rates can um, help because if interest rates are going down, more people may be borrowing money. So the change in the interest rate can be an indicator of what people will do in the future. And so a lot of those are considered to be leading indicators that people try to foretell what's going to happen in the economy. But what is going on in the economy? And that's where we run into what's called coincident indicators. Statistics that show people what's happening right now. Like, for example, how many people are actually employed? Uh, what is the personal income right now? What is the sales right now? And those numbers have a significance as to what's happening in the economy uh, as these numbers are being created. And then there's lagging indicators to kind of show what happened and what was the what had happened in the past and what are we seeing right now for example the length of employments would be a really big one for and you're not really going to know the length of employment until someone's fired if people are, have been working long periods of time that means the jobs are secure the people are happy with what they're doing they're being productive but if that time of employment starts to shrink that means more people are getting fired um, more people were fired and they're not being able to stick in their jobs the size of inventories is another big lagging indicator if the inventories are piling up they're getting larger that would mean that the sales are not doing so well uh, that the the companies are being stuck with stuff that they've produced but 
no one's buying it. That would be a bad lagging indicator. Uh, whereas if inventories are way down and companies are having a hard time keeping up, then that would be a lagging indicator that the, if the inventories had gone down, that means that we had a pretty good sale before. Uh, and also the number of loans being repaid would be another lagging indicator based on how well people were doing economically and then did they have the money in order to pay off their loans. This concludes discussion number 13, measuring the economy's performance. Discussion number 5, aggregates and indicators. This also concludes the chapter 13 discussions.